Hey everybody, welcome to the show into the beautiful Canadian province of Alberta. This is farm country, but it's also giant spring black bear country. On today's show, I'll be joining up with my friends at Freedom Munitions on a spring bear hunt extravaganza. FreedomMunitions.com, your online ammunition destination presents The High Road with Keith Warren. First off, I'm grateful to be an American, to live in a country that still has country like this. This is wonderful. I love doing this kind of thing. I love it. If you didn't see the previous show, we wound up had a heck of a hunt the first part of the week. We tagged along with Jansen Jones as he shot another seven foot plus monster black bear. And then of course me, I couldn't, I couldn't say no to my finger on the very first day I smoked one and dropped him in his tracks. So on today's program, I'm trying to kind of pull off this finger, maybe, maybe not even take ammo with me to the stand. There's that many black bears. So sit back and watch your show. I think you're going to like it. Last year we wound up coming up here and we were actually doing some in-field testing of the new Boar Buster ammo by Freedom Munitions. And so during the last hunting season, Freedom Munitions came out with a brand new line of Hunter ammo. It's called Tagged Out. And so tagged out, I used it all last year, and I mean, I smoked white tails and mule deer all over the place with it. And so I was looking forward to this year coming back and seeing how tagged out would perform on these big, thick-skinned, thick-boned black bears in Alberta. And the first stop was the gun range. And just to make sure the rifle zeroed in, I'm gonna start out at 100 yards, and I'm gonna put my Tannerite out. All right, we've got our stuff set up here, and what we're gonna do we're going to check zero right quick. And we've got some tannerite to do that. Both Jansen and I are using the tagged out ammo. Jansen is shooting a 30 out 6 caliber, and I'm shooting a 300 Win Mag. Meanwhile, Jeremy's trying out the big grains, and big grains are a big cartridge. He's using a 4570, and it turns out that it was a great load for this hunt. I've hunted with Jeremy in the past a couple of different times. I've taken him on a hog hunt down in Texas where we used uh, thermal and night vision. I mean, smoked up the hogs. And then we were up in North Dakota on a prairie dog shoot. So Jeremy, he knows what he's doing when it comes to hunting and he's really gotten into filming. And so Jeremy is one of these guys he wants to film himself. And I'm all about that. Stops, walks up a little Guy's a celebrity. <laughs> Shoots one big up. black bear, thinks he owns the woods. The High Road with Keith Warren is presented by Reconyx, Walls Pro Series, Legendary Arms Works, Sightmark, and Supercharged Scent Killer by Wildlife Research Center, 99%. The High Road will be right back. Now it's time for viewer feedback, brought to you by Protect the Harvest, Protect the Hunt, this is from Wally. He says, I'm really just starting to get into shooting. What is the best advice you could give for a beginning shooter to learn to be a good shot? Wally, that's a, that's a good question. I think it's a practice, practice, practice. Uh, you need to shoot a lot. And one thing that I would recommend you do, uh, have somebody with a telephone 
uh, film you shooting on slow-mo because you'll be able to pick you, any kind of bad habits that you're getting off that slow-mo footage. Uh, we've got lots of videos on our YouTube channel that'll help you become a better shot. But the best way to become a better shot is to practice, practice, practice. Hey guys, I'm Jeremy with Freedom Munitions. Uh, I'm actually in the marketing department. I came up here for this Alberta bear hunt and uh, I've been doing a lot of the self-filming myself here to kind of gather some content for social media and a lot of the stuff that we do on the marketing side of things. And we're out here. This is my first time in Alberta bear hunting. Bear hunting before, but never in Alberta, and especially not at Dale's place. And it's, it's amazing, amazing up here. We're up here field testing our new big grains ammo. Uh, that stuff is offered in a 4570. So of course I had to bring a lever gun up with me to take down one of these big old black bear up here, one of these big old bruisers. So, you know, I'm out here filming by myself and all of a sudden one of these black bear rolls in and, you know, of course you got to manage the camera, you got to manage yourself. I had a GoPro on my head and this bear comes walking on in and I knew something was up. I, I knew something wasn't all there. So when the bear came in, you know, obviously handling all those cameras, he stood up, took the shot on him. And when I found the bear after we recovered him, uh, there, was, there was something going on that you guys have never seen before and something I've never seen before. Check that out. Look at, look at that. No bottom jaw. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, when I shot him, he was just kind of hanging out there and his tongue was hanging and I don't know how he was eating, but he's an old boar. He's got one, one tooth on him. That, that's crazy. <laughs> Pretty big though. Over the years, we run into bears that have endured some hardship in their life. Uh, we've taken some bears with uh, three, le three legs in the past that have either been caught in wolf snares or maybe uh, had been shot with bullets or whatever. Um, this bear is re really unique. Somehow he's, uh, he's lost his bottom jaw and uh, he's still uh, obviously very healthy and uh, able to, uh, to get around out there and survive in the woods. That's amazing. Like this, like this, there's no movement in the lower jaw at all. Like there's just a little, like if you pull on this, it doesn't open. There's just this little tiny hole, like maybe not even as big as a golf ball. And this bear is fat. I mean, we, we get bears that are eating properly that come out of hibernation, skin and bones. And this bear is like living the good life with unable to eat. That's amazing. Amazing. When we're in hunting camps, we wind up running into all kinds of different people. And on this particular hunt, we've got a couple from Iowa. And they actually watched our show that we did from Dale McKinnon's place last year and booked the hunt. And as luck would have it, they're here with us in camp. Now, Jed is going to be filming Sarah, and Sarah is going to be filming Jed. Jed's bow hunting, and Sarah is going to be using a rifle. The way we heard about this trip up here was uh, we were watching Keith on the high road and we decided that we wanted to come to Canada and go for a bear hunt. We've seen all the different styles of bears up here and it really made a good impression to us that it was a good place to come bear hunting with all the different color phases. Sarah's hunting with a rifle and I'm hunting with a bow and we've had really good hunts up here. We've seen plenty of bears. Sarah has taken two black bears with her rifle. Bow kill come in, fed it the bait. We sat there for a while and watched, make sure it was, you know, the bear we wanted to shoot. A lot of different bears coming in and out of the baits. Um, we decided that that was the bear we were going to take. Filtered back around us, then come back in front of us, and the shot it was probably about a 10 to 15 yard shot. Bear went about 20 yards. I was truly ecstatic about the color of the bear. They call it a cinnamon bear. Very rare to see, you know, those color of bears anywhere else in the world. And we happen to be lucky enough to be sitting in a stand where one come out, come right in front of us. And it was a very exciting time to get to see something like that in this part of the world, especially somewhere we'd never have been and first time ever hunting bears. The High Road with Keith Warren is presented by Pulsar, Timber Creek Outdoors, 
Legends Ranch, the Lucas Oil Outdoor Line, Record Rack Deer and Elk Feed, and FreedomMunitions.com, your online ammunition destination. The High Road will be right back. Now it's time for Gear Care, brought to you by the Lucas Oil Outdoor Line. You know, there's a buddy of mine that is nuts about oiling down his guns before he puts them up, and I think that's great. But I've always gone to his place, and he'll show me his guns, and I take him out, and I kind of feel tacky and gummy a little bit, feeling something like there's sap on them. And he didn't know why. And I'm telling him, because you're using the wrong gun oil. Tell him why. Well, some of the bio-based lubricants have a percentage of water. So after a period of time when the water evaporates, well, you get that tack. So that's what you're feeling. And that's one thing Lucas does not do, is make, make their lubricants that way. So there are a lot of uh, lubricants when you go to the store and you look out there, but there's only one made by Lucas called the Extreme Gun Oil. And it's not gonna leave your gun feeling sappy or tacky in any way. And the good thing about it is what? It's made in America. It's made in America and sold to the world. There you go. For more information on the Lucas Oil Outdoor Line, visit our website and join us on Facebook for more gear care tips. You run into all kinds of characters up in Bear Camp, and one of the characters you run into up here on this trip, as far as I'm concerned, is John. John, he's a character. Dale typically takes six hunters at a time on each package that he does, and so four of the hunters that are up here are, are with Freedom Munitions. We've got me, we've got Jansen, we've got Jeremy, and we've got John Kraft. John Kraft, he is the definition of a character. So the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna spray each other down with scent killer and head to the stand. Hey, my name is John Kraft. I'm up here with uh, Keith Warren from the High Road and Jansen Jones from Freedom Munition. They were kind enough to invite me up here to Alberta, Canada for some black bear hunting. It's my first time up here. We set up these stands really quickly this evening because we think there's a big bear here. It's a little bit windy. Uh, we're rocking back and forth. Uh, we're gonna get quiet here in a minute. And then we're gonna cross our fingers and hope for a big bear to come in. The spot we're sitting is in the thick woods. We're not in a tree real tall up, but uh, we're in these thick woods and I mean, we hadn't been there long and all of a sudden look up and a bear pops out right behind us. It's like we didn't have a shot on it. Wasn't a big bear anyway, but he pops out right behind us and I'm thinking, okay, I mean, typical Dale McKinnon fashion, things are gonna be on tonight. And a little while later, I look up, I see another bear coming in through the side. And another Reconyx is picking him up right now. And so I'm filming him from above and the Reconyx got him from down below and everything's cool. And I'm thinking, okay, this is a nice bear. I mean, he's a nice bear. And all of a sudden I look down and I notice something unusual about this bear. I said, hey, John, that bear's got a white patch on his chest. That's all it took. Jansen before the hunt, you know, I've never shot a bear with that marks on his chest. So even though he's a little bit smaller, when he came around and we saw those marks, I thought those were cool. And I've got another tag for tomorrow. That's what's great about this place. Yeah! The High Road with Keith Warren is presented by AirVenturi.com Liberty Safe Shadow Hunter Blinds Supercharged Scent Killer by Wildlife Research Center, 99%. And Tannerite brand binary rifle targets. The High Road will be right back. Getting back to some of these places, it, it can be a tough quad ride. And what I'm talking about, you better be hanging on because it has been wet this spring. The roads are boggy, muddy, nasty. 
but that's what it takes to get to where the big bears are. This time, I wind up getting in a tree, and I'm getting set up in there, and I've got everything ready. I mean, it's early. We got in a little bit earlier than last night, and uh, I hadn't been in the stand 10 minutes, and guess who shows up? That right there is the way I like to knock them down. Absolutely knock them dead in their tracks. There's no tracking. Oh, wow. All right, we're gonna go down there and take a good close look at him. I'll show you what he looks like, but I am still shaking. I'm telling you, I can't even, I can't even begin to tell you how fun bear hunting is. So now I've got my second bear on the ground and I am absolutely stoked. I'm thinking, okay, I may be done for the 2017 season, but I'm coming back. I guarantee I'm coming back. But it's early, okay, and I'm gonna get down, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna do the recovery. And so I get down, I finish up the recovery, everything is cool, and as I'm sitting there on a log, I look up, and here comes a bigger black bear. And he comes right in. Don't do it, bear. I don't wanna have to shoot you. Go on, get, get. Go on, get out of here. Go on, get, get. Folks, that's a big bear right there. That's a big bear. I've already taken my two bears and I am, like I said, I'm not a trophy hunter. I said that earlier, but this guy right here is a trophy in anybody's book. I'm sitting here talking. I mean, I, I, I'll shoot him if I have to, that's for doggone sure, but I'm waiting on my ride to get here now. There was really no reason for me to be gravely concerned because the bear really did show no signs of any aggression at all. I sat there and watched him and uh, I kept my distance away from him. As long as he behaved, I was gonna behave. All of a sudden, Cole drives up and the bear's still there. That is, that's a giant bear. How big is that bear? He's seven five, probably seven and a half foot bear. I mean, I'm telling you, he's so big that I'm, I'm like going, I, I, and I mean, I got all the video. I was sitting on that log and he was licking the blood oh right God. here. Buddy, you got the bears. I mean. Oh and you don't want to know what Jansen did again. What, did you shoot a big one? So it comes as no surprise when I get back to camp uh, and talking to Jansen. I think we ought to call him Jansen Good Luck Jones. Jansen wound up shooting another monster. size of that barrel and the height, I think we should take him. Ready? Yeah. Well, Day four up here in Alberta with Dale McKinnon, Alberta guy and outfitters. And we weren't in the stand five minutes and a solid black bear rolls on in. You know they're solid when their shoulders at or above the barrel and they can reach up and grab the beaver and yank it right off the stand. So I decided to shoot. 
put a good shoulder shot on him. He went on up the hill. We heard him crash in there. We're gonna give him a minute, and then we're gonna go in there, see what we got. This place is absolutely amazing. The black bear population up here is quite frankly, the best I've ever seen. Uh, this bear had that white patch on its chest, so he came in cautiously. Uh, we watched him for about 20 minutes, and then uh, I reduced him to personal property. That's a politically correct way to say I smoked that mother <laughs> <laughs> I reduced him to personal property. Yeah, in this hunt, the uh, guide had never put up a tree stand before. Keith's in back of me reading a friggin' book on how to hunt bear. You know, I'm like, Jesus Christ, these are the people I'm entrusting my hunt to. This McKinnon guy is just driving trucks of jelly donuts all over Alberta, uh, swearing by it, saying, I should have bottled this 20 years ago, I got f***ed. No, all right, let's get serious, let's get serious. Okay.